Trashy people. Yuck. They're criminals, junkies, jerks, losers. You know them when you see them. They're hard to live near because they bring communities down. And at a time when Americans are re-exploring their options on where they should live and can live, more and more of us are bailing so we can make a better life and put the ghetto trash in the rearview mirror. The internet searches for where can I move have nearly doubled in the last five years alone. And as you can see on this chart, a lot of the country has been searching for this topic. And you can see there are certain areas where people are not searching for I want to move, which is probably revelatory about how trashy those regions are or not as a whole, kind of. I'm going to go through the places you can move to if you're tired of all the ghetto and trash. Now, a lot of people, they can't move far away. So what I did was I broke up the country into 10 different regions. So you can find the region where you live to see which place by you has, based on data, the best schools and that are the most affordable and that have the lowest amount of crime and drama and ghetto trash. You told this you were leaving. Then you kissed it goodbye. No more ghetto shootings, no more places to hide. Okay, so we're going to begin this whole thing on the West Coast, and then we're going to work our way across the country. A ton of people are fleeing California, as well as other large cities on the West Coast, like Portland and Seattle. Portland and Seattle are homeless havens and frankly out of control, which gets old quick. But where can you move to in this area? There's a lot of places to pick from, but I ran some data for you, and I have an answer. Bend, Oregon is a solid choice. Sorry, Bend, but despite being a place where people are flocking to, it still remains relatively affordable, where home prices are $477,000 and rising weekly. There simply isn't enough inventory to keep up with demand here. In Bend, you get twice the property you're probably used to for a 30% discount. Crime-wise, Bend scores great. It's not perfect here, it's not perfect anywhere, but crime is far lower than the rest of Oregon and way lower than most bigger cities in California. It gets 300 days of sunshine. Downtown's charming and is filled with restaurants, shops, and bars. Some people say Bend is heaven. But if you want to stay in your trashed West Coast city and stick it out, that's your choice. I mean, some people like the ghetto. Our next region is up here in the Upper Mountain West. That's what I'm calling it anyway. Now, this might be the least trashed region in the country so far, anyways, for now, but there isn't a very large city in this whole area, and large inner cities are where the most trash lives. If you're trying to find a place to live in this region, Boise is probably going to be your best bet. It's pretty laid back here. There's a large Mormon population here, so Sundays are going to be sleepy. It has a small town feel with the benefits of a large town. Idaho is not all boot-wearing lumberjack women either, pal. And it's not all small town diners anymore. In terms of entertainment, dining, and shopping, there's plenty to do. Most folks are friendly. Politically, it remains conservative, but it's also liberal tolerant. It's kind of a hybrid between a welcoming Midwest city and a college town. And how expensive is Boise? $361,000 expensive. Jobs-wise, it's moving up fast too. Tech companies are coming, believe it or don't. And Boise is still so young and new that stuff changes here every week. It's literally... A breath of fresh air. In this region, you have the large cities of Denver, Phoenix, and Salt Lake City, all of which are growing really fast. Phoenix and Denver are two of the fastest growing cities in the country. But with that comes more of the trash you're fleeing from. Crime, homelessness, and drugs. Colorado Springs is a nifty place to consider moving to for all ghetto refugees. To begin, home prices are only about $339,000, which is super low for a quality place to live in Colorado. And it's becoming a place where health conscious, younger families are turning to to set down roots. Being out west, this place gets a big A for outdoors. And even though half a million people live here, it's spread out, so it doesn't feel like a big city. More like a sleepy suburb. But that doesn't mean there aren't plenty of things to do. There's plenty of arts and music and a great beer scene, if that's your thing. The job market here has been called booming. And it's not just military jobs. Careers in healthcare, construction, and even technology type positions are opening up here. And finally, Colorado Springs' local school district just lost its top spot as the best public school district in the whole state. So there's not ghetto trash in the schools either. 
Down here in this part of the country, you have several states to choose from, but Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma are troubled in many ways. There's some great people down here, but they have some stuff to figure out. Texas, on the other hand, is definitely a destination for people who want a fresh start in this whole region. Plano would be your best bet. This is a community outside the Dallas metro area where you can get a house for about $350,000. Plus, there's plenty of land on which to build a home from scratch. And there's various other communities booming nearby as well, such as Frisco and McKinney. And talk about booming, Plano is the place to go for hundreds of new people every month. This up and coming suburb is a great place for families to move to, or for people to move to in order to begin a family. The schools are great, and there's endless sports leagues and activities. I would love to live in Texas. I bet I could learn how to line dance and be a real cowgirl too. Well, that's great, little mappy kid. She's growing up so fast right in front of our very eyes, isn't she? On the job front, Plano took the number one spot for job growth for technology in the whole country, people. Plano, Texas. Come on, it's a no-brainer. No trash, no ghettos. The middle of the country is challenging at times. With small towns come drug and property crimes. With larger cities come murder rates and high taxes and ghetto trash. But in Omaha, Nebraska, things are looking pretty good right now. Mostly trash-free. Home prices here are $200,000. What the what the? And no, I am not a realtor, but man, maybe I should be. I mean, come on people, 200 grand. But word on the street is homes get snagged within hours of being listed. They call Omaha the Silicon Prairie. That's because tech companies are flocking to Omaha in droves. Some are companies fleeing places like San Francisco and Seattle who want a better quality of life for their employees or themselves. Others are new. The venture capital scene here is also getting pretty big. Culture-wise, you might think Nebraska is a real snooze fest, but there's music and museums and great dining, and again, a great local beer scene. Even Taylor Swift makes an appearance every now and then. Yowzers! If you live in the Great Lakes region and want to get out of the ghetto, think about Cincinnati. <laughs> JK, that city's a dump. If you looked at the list of the fastest growing cities in the country right now, you would see that you wouldn't see any cities in the Great Lakes region in the top 100. You'd have to get to spot 115. That's because this part of the country is the place people are moving from, not to. Carmel, Indiana is an upper-class community north of Indianapolis. It has some of the best schools in the state, and just about everyone has a good job. Household incomes average about $116,000 a year, but the kicker is the home prices. You could still get a sweet deal on a home here for well under 400 grand, and those home prices are going to continue to go up by about 5% a year. A lot of the North Indianapolis suburbs are pretty solid. Places like Fishers and Zionsville and Noblesville are also very safe and family-friendly places to live, which are far enough away from the Midwest trash that you'll feel protected. No mo ghetto. The Mid-Atlantic region's kind of small, and it's becoming a go-to place for people fleeing Northeast and Midwest trash. South Carolina is one of the fastest growing states, and Nashville is also taken off. North Carolina, though, has a lot to offer. Great weather, a great coast, and a booming economy, at least in its largest cities. Raleigh is perhaps the best place to relocate in this region. Tech and healthcare is growing so fast here, they can't keep up with demand. Companies are offering big relocation packages for talented people to move to the area. The Raleigh suburbs of Cary, Apex, Morrisville, and Wake Forest are expanding into the forest, and they're building homes as fast as they can, and they still can't keep up. Culture-wise, it's not stimulating, but it's still very affordable for the time being. Under 300000 for a booming, safe place with decent schools is a steal. And at your disposal are several top-tier universities and an ocean only two hours away. Drama-free. It's pretty much going to be Florida or Georgia down here in the southeast. Alabama and Mississippi are challenged in many ways, though the people are super awesome and friendly and they mean well. Sadly, the best place you can live in this whole region are the North Atlanta suburbs, at least for safety, affordability, and family considerations. In Alpharetta, it's super great, but it's also super pricey, as in $437,268 pricey. But there's plenty of great jobs in Atlanta if you want to deal with the long commutes. Or, mommy and daddy can just take a bus or train. Alpharetta has a dense suburban feel, and thank God you don't have to go to Atlanta for entertainment because there's plenty of stuff to do in town. There's a trendy new downtown area here with lots of hip, cool things to do for a night out. 
The schools are highly rated. Tons of parks and green belts and sports leagues for the kids. The kind of place where you feel like you're part of a community. And for many of us, that's lacking right now. We're almost done now. Two more places where you can head for the hills. And that's what a lot of people are doing in the Northeast. Many are headed south, but for the people who want to remain in this region for culture or for family, you have some options. For instance, data indicates Morristown, New Jersey is the best place in this region. If you can afford the $594,000 price tag, that is. But hey, it's the New York metro area. It's going to be cash, 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 people. Morristown's a great place to raise a kid and put down roots. You'll find a lot of active families and the kids can get a great education. The cute little downtown area has boutiques and restaurants and fun things for adults and kids. It's the smallest place on our list. There's only 19,000 people in Morristown, so you get to know people pretty quickly. Probably at the downtown common area they call The Green, where everybody will gather and talk about the neighbors and get all nosy about your business. You know what? This place is bugging. Did you know Steve Forbes was born in Morristown? (laughs) How would I know that, Mappy? Anybody else born here? This place is too vanilla for me. Craig Newmark, the founder of Craigslist, was born there. (laughs) Mappy, remember when I tried to sell you on Craigslist once? That was funny. I got, like, no emails for you. Do you? Remember? Anyways, we're way off topic. Thanks, Mappy. Bye, Mappy. Okay, so we made it to our last region, the New England states. Small towns in the New England area are charming, and many are filled with drug-addicted trash. So if you're over it, and you want to move somewhere where there isn't drug-addicted pawn shop trash, please consider Portland, Maine. This is your quintessential New England port city with cobblestone streets and charming shopping and dining districts. If you love seafood, you'll love Portland. There's enough fresh stuff pulled out of the water here for everyone. Lobster pizza, lobster rolls, lobster chili, lobster pie, lobster salad, if that's your thing. Great beer, great wine, ferries to fun islands and music festivals in the summertime, and lighthouses. Who doesn't like lighthouses? And this place is filled with younger families with morals, people. Crime is far lower than a typical American big city, and it's going down. But there's only 67,000 people here, so I don't know if you could consider this an actual big city. And for $353,000, you can get a place with a view of the water. For even less than that, you can get a place on an island on the water. Although it looks a little dated, but you can make it look nice. I have faith in you. And hey, if the millennials say it's cool, then it must be. The younger folks are coming here from places like Boston and New York. And according to this somewhat well-informed article, they're finding there's actually jobs they like. Surprisingly, maybe to you, the greater Portland area is becoming a thriving tech scene, as well as one with bioscience and biopharma. So if you're a programmer, a bioscientist, or a biopharmacist, or if you just want to pull shrimp out of the water all day long, this is is a place for you, mister. That's Portland, and that's our rundown of the different areas where you can flee in order to get away from ghetto trash. They're the types of places where families can settle in, get good jobs, and watch their perfect little kids grow up into responsible mommies and daddies. Just perfect. Now, if you live in a place where people are stealing from each other and where it's ghetto and violence, hopefully this was helpful. Maybe it gave you some ideas on where to move. I know moving can be a scary thing, but isn't living in ghetto trash even scarier? I mean, America's changing, folks. It's time for you to get up and go. All the ghetto trash is spilling into the suburbs. It's not too late to leave. Just saying. And now, a really, really good song. You told this you were leaving. Then you kissed it goodbye. No more ghetto shootings, no more places to hide. So you packed your bags one day, cause this place is full of fools, and you just want to walk away, and you just don't feel so safe. Gotta blame it on something, gotta gotta blame it on something. Blame it on the trash, they were out causing drama. Blame it on their kids, all eight of them. Whatever you do, don't bring that shit with you. Blame it on the trash, yeah, yeah. 
Because the trash don't mind. And the trash won't care. They get it. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. You can also now buy my songs on iTunes and other formats. Click the link in the description. Thanks for watching. And remember, while we all might have different views, we should all be nice to each other and try to make the U.S. a better place in a positive way. This is Sage Nick's manager. This has been a Corner House Entertainment production.